Learning to use your new iPhone in doable doses and in an orderly fashion is so much easier than lurching from one thing to the next, trying to figure everything out. If you do that, you'll probably go nuts and wish you'd never gotten an iPhone. This video is the first in a 12-part series of iPhone Basics tutorials designed to get you up and running with your new iPhone in no time. The series is not going to cover everything there is to know about the iPhone. That's you know, almost impossible. But each video will contain a handful of helpful tips. You'll never hear me say, let me show you the 55 easy steps to setting up your iPhone. I'm all about keeping things simple. This video series will get you off the ground and enjoying your new iPhone in no time. Hi. My name is Rich, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to cover four easy to follow steps in setting up your new iPhone. And if you stick around until the end, there's a bonus tip too. This is a road tested method I've used with each iPhone I've owned, so there's a bit of wisdom in this process. I really hope you find this video helpful. And if you do, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're building a community of great people just like you who help each other by leaving comments below, and I hope you do the same. In today's video, we're going to cover setting up your new iPhone from scratch, cleaning up your home screen, putting the right apps in your dock, changing your wallpaper and lock screen, and then a bonus tip at the end on how to update your software. Now, none of this stuff is complicated, and I'll walk you through each step. If you miss something, just rewatch that section until you get the hang of what I'm doing. There are chapter markers in the description below so you can, you know, jump around whenever you find that helpful. Lastly, the iPhone I'm using for this video is an iPhone 15 Plus running iOS 17. All right, let's get started. When you bring your new iPhone home and you power it up, this is the screen that you get. And you need to get started right here. But before you do anything, it's important to know that you need to be able to connect to the internet. Now, you can set up your phone without connecting to the internet, but it is way easier to do it during the setup process than trying to mess with it later. So if you have internet access in your home, be sure to get your username and password for your internet connection. Also, if you've had an iPhone before, you need your Apple ID, username, and password. So you need your Wi-Fi password and your Apple ID, username, and password if you have that. If not, we can set that up as we go along. This is what it looks like when you first get started. You just swipe up. I'm going to choose English as the language for me. United States is my country. I'm just going to leave the appearance to the default. You can do medium, which makes things a little bit bigger, or you can really make things large if that's easier for you to see. For me, it's just the default. For the appearance, I'll hit continue. I'm going to click set up without another device. We won't go into that. I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi. And I've entered in the password and now it's connecting to my Wi-Fi. And now it's going to activate my iPhone. And this may take a few minutes, but if it does, I'll fast forward. Hit continue for data privacy. Now I'm going to set this up for myself, not for a child or my family. This is my iPhone, so I'll set it up for myself. And now I'm going to continue. I'm going to set up Face ID. So I'm going to say get started. And now it wants to look at my face. And you just move your head around. And then it'll ask you, do you want to set up a uh, face ID with a mask because of the pandemic? And I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to use, don't use face ID with mask. Now Face ID is now set up. I'll hit continue. I'm going to create a passcode option. I use a four digit one, but you can use a six digit one. That's up to you. In this case, it says my passcode can be easily guessed, but I guess any four digit passcode can. 
I'm going to click Use Anyway, enter it again. I'm not going to transfer any apps or data. Um, I could back it up from iCloud if I had something like that. If you had an old iPhone that you traded in and now you've got a new one, you can just back it up from iCloud if you want to do that, and that's a very simple way. But for purposes of today, I'm just going to uh, set it up as a new phone, and I'm not going to transfer anything. Now here is where you enter your Apple ID. If you don't have an Apple ID, you can tap on forgot password or don't have an Apple ID and you can create a free Apple ID right there um, but I already have one so I'm not going to use that but this is where you would set up an Apple ID if you don't have one if this is your first time to own a new phone so I'm gonna go ahead and enter my Apple ID And then I'm going to hit continue. And now it wants my password. Now it's asking for an Apple ID verification code. So I have what's called two factor authentication set up on my iPhone. What that means is if somebody stole my iPhone or had my username and password and got in to my phone and they were logging in, it Apple will send uh, a message to another device that you have where you give permission for this device to be connected. In this case it sent the information to my iPad and I'm going to click allow on that and now it's given me a code and here is where I enter this. Now if you don't have any other Apple devices then you're not going to get this screen so you don't have to worry about that. But if you have had an Apple ID and you set up two-factor authentication, then you're going to need that. So now it's signing me in. And it says, make this your new iPhone. I'm going to continue. And I have some credit card or debit cards that I've added. So here I'll enter my security code. You won't have this if you've not added any debit or credit cards to your iPhone wallet. I have, so this pops up when I'm setting up a new iPhone. Now it's asking me, do I want to set up Siri? And I do, I do want to set up Siri. So I'm going to hit continue. And it wants me to share audio recordings. I don't particularly like to do that, so I'm going to click not now. And then emergency SOS, if iPhone is ready to help in an emergency, I'll hit continue. And now I'll swipe up to get started. And there, now you've set up your new iPhone. Now you've got your new iPhone set up. One of the things that you'll notice is that you have a lot of applications and you have uh, various widgets and things like this on your screen. If you swipe over, and by swipe I mean just take your finger and slide it across the screen like that, you'll get to what's called the app library over here. And I like to put all of my apps in the app library. This is just too confusing to me. So if you press and hold, you can tap the little minus and, and tap remove from home screen one at a time, like that. Or if you want to give it a try, you can take your finger and grab one and then just tap them like this, one at a time. And now they're all under your finger and you slide over until you get to the app library. And then you just pull them into one of the squares and let go. And now they're all there and that page is all cleaned up. 
And now you've got the first page. There's still more to do. So I'm going to grab one. And I'm going to tap it. Like that. And wait till it gets to the app library. And then I'll just pull them into a square and let go. And I'll tell you, that takes a little practice to do. It's easy to just sort of not swipe right. So that's why I wanted to show you. And you can do them one at a time, or you can do them a bunch at a time. But I've gotten the hang of doing a bunch at a time, and you can give that a try. But if it's just too frustrating, just do them one at a time. It'll only take you a minute to do it. And then lastly, these two widgets I'm going to get rid of too. I'm going to remove the stack, and I remove that stack. And that's it. That's how you sort of clean up your home screen. Now you have something that sort of makes sense to you, or at least makes sense to me. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the dock setup. This is your dock down here. And, you know, primarily the iPhone is a communication device. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of things. It's a computer. It's a internet web surfing device. I mean, there's all kinds of things that it does. But for me, it's primarily a communication device. And when I pick up my iPhone, I'm usually going to make a phone call, send a text message, or some sort of communication. At least that's what the main things I use it for. So I like to keep those communication uh, applications in the dock. So let me show you how to do that. So here you can see the telephone. That's a communication device. Here you can see text messaging. So that's a communication device. But the uh, Safari and music, those are not communication things. So I'm going to just tap and hold, and I'm going to click Remove App. I don't want to delete it. I'm just going to remove it from the home screen. And I'll do the same here. I'm going to put Remove App and remove from the home screen. Now I have the phone and I have text messaging in there as well. Another way to communicate is through FaceTime. So I like to keep FaceTime in the dock. And if you tap and hold and put add to home screen, it puts it up here. And then if you tap and hold in the middle of your screen until things start jiggling, then you can bring that down here. And now you've got phone calls messaging, FaceTime, and you can put four things in here. And the other app that I put in the dock is the mail app. So if we go back over here and we tap on this, here's mail. So I'm going to click and hold and I'm going to tap add to home screen. And again, I'm going to tap and hold in the center till things start getting jiggly. And I'm going to slide it down here like that. So now I have my telephone, text messaging, FaceTime, and email. And those are the four ways that I communicate, and I like to keep those four things in the dock. Now, what I do with my home screen is I wait and see what apps I tend to use the most over time. And if I find myself, you know, in the Photos app, which I usually do, I'll add that to the home screen too because now I want to look at photos. And if there's any other apps that I use regularly, I like to add those to the home screen too. And I do listen to music, so I'll add to the home screen. And I do listen to podcasts, so I'll add that to the home screen. And I do read books from time to time. Although I don't always have that on the home screen, but I do take a lot of photos. So I like to have my camera on there, so I'll add that to the home screen. So for me, that's pretty much it. That is that is how I set up my iPhone. And for me, this is sort of a clean look. I don't get confused by having a whole bunch of icons all over the place and me trying to figure out what I'm going to do. My communication, I, my communication applications are in the dock, and then the other applications I use are up on the home screen. And so that just makes sense to me, and that's how I set up my dock. All right, the next little tip I want to give you is how to set up wallpaper in your lock screen. Now, this is sort of a pretty wallpaper, but maybe you want to change that to something else. And you can do that. And how you do it is you take your finger and swipe from the very top, 
and you come down until you're on a lock screen. This takes you to a lock screen. Now I'll get rid of these notifications. And if you take and press on it like that, it gets small and if you swipe over, now you can create a new lock screen. So if you tap on that, there's all kinds of different things you can do. You can do you can do weather. As you can see it's raining. You can do emojis if you want to do that. If you want to do a color, you can do a color. If you want to do photos, you can do that. If you tap on photos and all there's I have a whole bunch of different photos in here that are loading up. If you want to do your grandson, you can do your grandson. Just like that. I like to keep things fairly clean and so I'll use a color. I'll use a color that's got enough contrast in it to where it works well with the app icons that I have. So this is one that I use regularly. And if you take that you can do a little customizing with the background color. Um, and if you'll notice there are uh, little dots right here and if you swipe it goes a slightly different view of the color that you've chosen. And I think I'll leave it maybe on solid. And you can also tap on the time and you can make the time thinner if you want or you can make it a different style like that. And I'm going to click add and now you'll see it says customize the home screen. Well, there's nothing for me to customize there, although I guess you could use a gradient if you wanted to. But I'm going to just leave it like that and now I'm going to click done. I'm going to tap on it, swipe up, and now I've got my home screen just like that. And it's a little bit cleaner. But that's all by taste. You can use whatever background that you want. But that's the way to change the wallpaper and the lock screen. Again, if you slide down from the top, there's your lock screen. Pretty simple. All right, this last tip is a little bonus tip, and it's something that you really need to do. When you get your new iPhone like this, and you've set it up, and you've kind of organized it and played around with it a little bit, uh, you do need to make sure that you're up to date on your software. And if you slide over and you go to settings, and maybe you don't see settings in here, you can just tap up here and go to settings. Here we go. Like that. And you go to general. And you go to software update. And here it'll say if you need to update your software or not. I'm running iOS 17.1.2 at this time and so that's up to date. If it's if your software is not up to date you'll be prompted to update your software and just follow the on-screen instructions and you'll be good to go. But it's important to keep your software up to date so be sure to do that. So that wasn't too hard and now you know how to get your iPhone set up connected to the internet and pretty well organized. And it didn't even take that long. And please feel free to make any changes that make sense to you. After all, it's your iPhone. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.